Hi, I'm Karina. Let me catch you up where we left off. This past month, I was invited to join a group of other content creators promoting new experiences in Switzerland with EF Ultimate Break, my all-time favorite group travel company. Seeing as the actual trip was only for a few days, I wanted to extend my time here and arrived a bit early to explore some of the more remote towns like Gimmelwald and Lauterbrunnen. I stayed in the magical mountain hostel with the most insane views, took the train to several charming alpine towns like Grindelwald and Interlaken, and spent the last day exploring the city of Lucerne before arriving in Zurich early this morning. First on our agenda for today was to drop our bags at our hotel, meet the rest of the group that's already arrived, and wander around the beautiful port before grabbing some lunch. Could not have asked for better weather today. This is so beautiful, oh my gosh. Myself and a couple of the other girls checked out a grocery store with local produce and grabbed some snacks to have a picnic in a nearby park. It was honestly such a wholesome moment and I love experiencing grocery stores in new countries. We then had a little bit of free time which we used to freshen up at the hotel before meeting with the rest of the group for a walking tour of downtown Zurich. The next few days were fully planned out for us with a bunch of fun activities and a jam-packed itinerary and I was really looking forward to seeing more of Switzerland. Our local guide took us all over the charming center of the city, pointing out historic churches and their famous Swiss clock faces, and how the city was once surrounded by fortifications that were demolished throughout the late 1800s. We wandered through the narrow alleyways, finding hidden picturesque squares and colorful buildings around every turn. Then we finally came across the river and the lighting was just perfect at golden hour. I couldn't be happier with the weather. After a few drizzly days, it was so nice to see the sun again. took some time to snap photos and people watch as the afternoon crowd had settled on the bank before making our way towards our welcome dinner at a rooftop restaurant. <laughs> EF really spoiled us over these few days. We dined at some beautiful places and ate incredible food all throughout our trip. But after a long arrival day in the city, most of us planned for an early night in, resting up before the busy day ahead. Good morning from Zurich. After a quick buffet breakfast at the hotel, we were off to the train station to catch a train to Lucerne. We're going to our second stop today, and then we're going to go up the mountain, so this is going to be fun. It's a snow day in June. I can buy this. And the ride was that much more comfortable in our first class seats thanks to EF and Swiss Pass. First class train is loose and Nice to have an upgrade every once in a while. We fully took advantage of the panoramic windows and the fact that we were the only group up here to enjoy the incredibly scenic views on both sides of the train to Lucerne. None of this fully felt real with these Swiss views that could basically pass for desktop screensavers. The colors were way too vibrant and my brain had a hard time comprehending the beauty of it all. But the fun didn't stop there. After a quick train change in Lucerne, we were off on the Engelberg Express while enjoying an artisanal chocolate tasting courtesy of Max Chocolatier. They took us through each piece and flavor profile of the chocolates, my favorite of course being the darkest chocolate. They make all of their products by hand and offer creations that use only in-season ingredients such as raspberries, cherries, and apricots for summer. The sweet distraction made the train trip go by quickly, but we still took some time to marvel at the beautiful scenery surrounding us. I think that was my new favorite EF experience. Oh, yeah. Chocolate on a train, it doesn't get any better than that. I'm sorry, sir. But before we knew it, we'd arrived in the mountain town of Engelberg, ready to dive into another delicious tasting experience, this time with cheese. I can't imagine a more picturesque backdrop for a cheese tasting. Does it get any better? Here we met our local guide Peter, who took us through the history of the place, a monastery built at the base of the mountains, founded in the 12th century. Offering regional cheeses and handmade farm products, we enjoyed learning about the cheese making process before giving it a go ourselves. The shop owner gave us a brief history of the place before taking us outside to try our hand at cheese production. Mm -hmm. 
However, the weather wasn't yet warm enough for the cheese to form, so we sampled some of the aged varieties that they had on hand. Either way, it was still interesting to see the old school methods they used to create their dairy products. While the cheese curds were forming outside, the shop owner challenged Noah to lift the heaviest aged cheese wheel in the shop, weighing about 70 pounds. The aged cheeses can take years to make, as the longer they sit, the more flavor they accumulate. We moved out to the courtyard to taste test some of the different types, starting with the youngest cheese, aged 3 years, and then onto the older cheeses. I think I preferred the softer, younger cheese, which was still full of flavor. They even gifted us with a glass of wine to go along with the snacks, and I was feeling completely spoiled. Cheese, chocolate, and local wine to start the day, EF really knocked it out of the park with these experiences. We finished off the last of our wine and gathered our things to head up the cable car to our hotel for the next two nights. We would be staying halfway up to Mount Titlis in an alpine chalet that offers some pretty unique experiences and absolutely incredible views. Even the ride up here was breathtaking. Seeing the snow-covered mountaintop in the middle of June was such a trip, honestly. As a California girl who grew up on the coast, I was so looking forward to a snow day with our group. The summer temperatures were starting to rise in Switzerland, so getting that first taste of crisp mountain air was such a relief. Even for being at the halfway point to the summit, we felt warm enough without a jacket, which is really saying something. And after our cheese-tasting appetizer, it was time to grab some lunch from the hotel restaurant. Not a bad spot for lunch. What a view, man. I loaded up with a hefty plate of fish and chips and sat in admiration of these gorgeous mountain views. We had some free time to check into our rooms and refresh before our exciting afternoon activities. First up on the list, zip lining. Zip line time. Let's go. This looks insane. That was amazing. Honestly, it was kind of like relaxing. I wasn't worried at all. Tomorrow, we're going up there. The zipline was a highlight of the day for sure, and it was so fun watching everyone else experience it. As for the rest of the afternoon, we had plenty of free time to do as we pleased. Leanna, Elizabeth, and I wanted to see more of this beautiful area, so we went on a short hike around the lake. I was speechless the entire time. How do places like this even exist? I was reminded every day here how incredible our planet is with its vast and varying landscapes. It was such a privilege to be here experiencing this. I can't even describe the beauty of this place. Like, absolutely insane. Doing a quick little hike around the lake right now. I think the views are gonna be too good. Later, we had a specially arranged dinner at the hotel thanks to the staff and Peter who set everything up for our group. The last cable car down to Engelberg leaves around 5 p.m., so we were the only group up here, which made the whole experience that much better. After an incredibly busy day, we had so much to recap over dinner. Most of us turned in early because we had something really exciting planned in the morning.
Peter and the EF team arranged for us to be the first ones up Mount Titlis the next morning to experience the cliff walk views without the crowds, and this was maybe my favorite experience yet. Unobstructed 360 degree views of the Swiss Alps surrounded by new friends, I was having the best time. Also before the crowds arrived, we had a chance to check out the glacier cave, and this is when the earmuffs and warm layers really came in handy. Oh wow. Oh wow. Okay. Way colder than this outside. Woo. For reference, it was about 47 degrees outside, which was way warmer with the sun. Here it was freezing. The glacier cave, absolutely amazing. After all those morning activities, it was time for a hearty breakfast. And seriously, does it get any better with these views? We ate pretty quickly as we had a few more activities to try before it got crazy busy. Someone said this felt like the Disney Soarin' ride in real life and they were absolutely right. We took the ice flyer down to the snow tubing area and had a blast cruising down the hill. The not so fun part was dragging the inner tube back up to go again. We spent some time here filming videos and taking photos before grabbing lunch back at the Mount Titlis restaurant. Then we had free time for most of the afternoon, so I, along with a few others, took the cable car back to our hotel and indulged in a much needed nap. Feeling well rested and refreshed, I joined a few of the other girls for a hike to a nearby waterfall. I couldn't get enough of this place, and with the incredible weather, we wanted to spend as much time outside as possible. After our hike, we returned to the hotel for our last dinner here, and the setup was just as beautiful as the night before. Also, every meal we had here was absolutely delicious. Even though we were full from all the incredible food, we had one last activity planned for the evening. We're gonna go frolic in the flowers. This is our post-dinner activity. Yes, we had a post-dinner scheduled frolic, although the wind was out to get us this time. Let's go. Worth it. It's a frolic. Everybody's ready to frolic. Mary Grace, our videographer, got some amazing shots of us running through this gorgeous field at sunset, and then it was time to rest up for our last full day in Switzerland. I was so sad to say goodbye to the stunning view. I don't think any other hotel will ever compare. Last day in Switzerland. And we're just about to leave our hotel, but I have to show you this. Because what is this? <laughs> we gathered our bags and said Ofita Saint to our eclectic, beautiful Alpine chalet, then took the cable car down to Engelberg, ready to hop on the train back to Lucerne. In 
After our scenic train ride, we'd transfer to a ferry across Lake Lucerne. We'd be staying in bits now at the base of Mount Rigi for our final night in Switzerland. I think my new favorite way to see this country is by ferry. On such a sunny day, watching the scenery pass by was so relaxing. Thanks to EF again, we found ourselves in first class here. And if you show your Swiss pass to the crew, you get a free gift. Oh, that's okay. Oh, thank you so much. I love the idea of luggage tags as a souvenir, something actually useful instead of more chocolate, which I'd already bought plenty of. After arriving in Vitznau, we immediately hopped on the updated cogwheel train, which climbed to the top of Mount Rigi on a near vertical slope. Not them having special signage for our immediate trip. Love that. And we were off. So trippy to see the landscape change from this angle. We were really starting to feel the altitude from this incline. Once we reached the top, we did some quick souvenir shopping before going on a short but steep hike to the Mount Reiki viewpoint. Here we had plenty of time to admire the 360 degree views of the region, snapping tons of photos and videos before continuing on a downhill slope to our next activity. Before long, we arrived at a cheese factory and said hello to our new friends. Holy cow! <laughs> the cows were so cute and photogenic, but we were here to learn more about cheese making. Apparently, the new cheese wheels get brushed with seasoning once a day for a month, so they soak in the flavoring over time. For lunch, we got to sample some traditional Swiss mac and cheese, which is typically served with applesauce and usually contains potatoes and onions and anything else you feel like throwing in there. Then we say goodbye to the cows and walk through the most beautiful mountain scenery back to the train station. Of course, we had to reward ourselves for making it through that hike. took the cogwheel train back to the town of Vitznau where we had some free time for the rest of the afternoon after checking into our hotel. But we were actually in for a bit of a surprise when we arrived at the hotel. Tell me why I have a whole hostel room to myself. Which one do I pick? The rooms were pretty unconventional with myself ending up in a whole hostel room, but we had some fun exploring the town afterwards and enjoying the fresh water of the lake. And it was time to head back to our rooms and get ready for our farewell dinner in the evening. I'm not sure I'm ready to say goodbye to Switzerland or this amazing group. Before our dinner, they invited us to have some drinks on the rooftop of the hotel, which had an amazing view. Everybody get in this year. 
The food was absolutely incredible and we finished it off with a little birthday celebration. After our dinner, because we wanted to keep the night going, we played some very intense and chaotic games of Uno back on the rooftop. I woke up early the next morning to misty skies, reluctant to say goodbye to this beautiful country. Once I arrived at the airport, it was really starting to set in that I had to say goodbye to Switzerland. I picked up a few Milka bars from my family back home, made it to the gate, and took my last few glimpses outside the window at this incredible scenery.